I didn't come up with a clever intro before I hit record. Hey guys, so, um, decided we'd, uh, do another, uh, meal prep video. Um, you know, I, uh, I quit my job, and so I'm not just eating at work every day, which means I have to start cooking for myself a whole lot more, which I'm actually not mad about. Um, I'm also, you know, trying to take some, trying to take care of myself, trying to, you know, stay healthy and not just eat garbage all the time. Um, and meal prep's a really good way to do that. So... <clears throat> I was thinking about what we could do that would be pretty quick and easy, and I kind of came up with this just like one pot uh, chicken fajita rice bowl thing. And you want to say one pot, that is if you have like the right equipment. Um, so like a big old oven safe giant skillet. Yeah, just like a big cast iron skillet like this or something similar. Something that's going to be oven safe and can fit a lot of food in it. If you have that then it's one pot. Um, if you don't, you can work in batches. It's not a big deal. You can use two pots, however you want to do it. Um, either way, this recipe uh, should end up being pretty simple. So we're going to make uh, some chicken, which I've got marinating right now, and we'll cut up some veggies, cook all that together. We're also going to make a little bit of pico de gallo um, just to keep in the fridge and you can throw on top. Yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with the red onion. Um, you can use white onions or yellow onions, whatever. Um, I like red onions because they're a little bit sweeter. They caramelize a little bit more when you cook them. And I just think they turn out better. So that's what we're doing. And that's our onions. Set those aside. Like a little color, a little bit of variety. So I've got one yellow, one orange, and one red bell pepper. And again, we're going to use about half of each. And now when you cut bell peppers, you typically want to do them skin side down. And the reason for that is the skin's kind of tough. And even if your blade's really sharp, it can still can still slip on it. And you can, so like my, my knife's pretty sharp, so it's working, but you can still kind of like, do you hear that crunch? You hear that? It means it wasn't cutting very easily. So, go back to skin side down, goes right through. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is just gonna stick these guys in the bowl that and these onions will break up a little bit and now if you watched uh, some of my older videos what I'm about to do might look familiar and it's because it's the same damn thing it's just I like it it's tasty so we've got all this we've got our fajita seasoning right here and our fajita seasoning is ancho chili powder Spanish smoked paprika oregano uh, cumin salt black pepper cayenne feel like I'm forgetting something. I don't know. Either way, um, I'll have a link, or not a link, you know, I'll just type it out in the description down below the recipe for this. Um, and so I'm just going to, what is that, like a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons, something like that. And then we'll take just a little splash of oil about like that. Let's just get our hands dirty. I'm just gonna get right in there. Start mixing. Just wanna move this around so that the oil and the spices coat everything. Oh my God, the onion strikes back. You know, even with all the precautions you can take to preventing the onion from making you cry, you know, cutting it properly, using a sharp knife, things like that. Sometimes it's just an angry onion. Something you can do about it. So, I'm just gonna set this off to the side. Then we've got our chicken, uh, which I've had marinating for about an hour. And again, the marinade's super simple. It's oil, lime juice, and fajita seasoning. Again, I'll put the recipe for that down below. Um, and this marinade, you can marinate anywhere from 30 minutes up to eight hours. And so what I'm using is uh, boneless, skinless thighs. Now, chicken breasts are you know, healthier, leaner, <clears throat> but uh, chicken thighs taste better. So I'm using chicken thighs. So, and also they're a lot harder to overcook. There's a lot uh, larger margin for error with these. You can fuck up on these and they're still gonna be juicy. It's hard to overcook a chicken thigh. So, um, 
we're gonna hop over to the stove and <clears throat> I'll show you what's going on. We are back at our stove, or I guess over at the stove. It's our first time over here today. And we've got our chicken, we've got our uh, cast iron, going about medium high heat, got it nice and preheated where it's getting a little smoky. Now this marinade's really oily, so I'm not gonna worry about oiling the pan at all. Just going to stick these guys in here. We put all of our thighs, all eight of them in there. Um, normally I would be worried about crowding the pan, um, but I'm really not with this one. I'm kind of just, you know, I want them all in there, fit nicely, get a little bit of a sear on. So we're just gonna sear them both sides and uh, finish them in the oven with the veggies. Now admittedly, there's quite a bit of liquid in here, so they're not gonna get as good of a sear as if I hadn't, you know, crowded the pan like I did because there's not as much dry heat. They're still gonna end up with a little bit of color, which is all we really want. So it's been on for a couple minutes. Just gonna flip them. And so they don't look perfect, but we're not going for perfect today. We're going for easy. We're going for simple, quick, minimal dishes, stuff like that. So it's a bit of a give and a take here, but I think these are gonna taste just fine. Okay, so we've had the chicken cooking, a couple minutes on each side. So we're just gonna take all of our veggies and just dump them in there. Just gonna kinda get it spread out and we're just gonna go in the oven. Got the oven preheated to 400 degrees. And how long? Well, I'll tell you how long when it's done, because I'm not actually sure yet. Um, but once the veggies and chicken are cooked all the way through, and I'll let you know how long it took in uh, like literally just a couple seconds. Okay, so <clears throat> we are out of the oven. Um, it took about 15 minutes, um, and that can vary depending on you know the equipment you're using, if your oven's really hitting the temp it should be, and anything else. So. Um, two things you want to check, always make sure your chicken is cooked all the way through. So 165 is typically the temperature you want your chicken to reach. However, chicken thighs, darker meat, stuff like that, it's actually better to cook them up to about 185. Um, reason for this is the collagen starts to break down, you actually end up with a more tender, moister piece of chicken if you go a little bit higher on there. So 185 is the internal temperature you want to shoot for with your chicken. And then the other thing too, just make sure your veggies are soft. You know, make sure they've lost that crunch and they just, they're good to eat like that. So, um, yeah, the last thing we want to do here, well, one of the last things we want to do, we're going to make some pico. So, pico de gallo is pretty simple, straightforward. Um, I have here six Roma tomatoes, uh, which we're just going to dice up. So, we're going to cut it in half lengthwise first. I want to get this, like, center part out. See that right there? It's like ooey gooey all those seeds and stuff like that. It's gonna give us like a really gross. So you just take your spoon, come in, and that'll scoop right out, just like that. Go right into the trash with it. Uh, next thing we want is some uh, onion. So is this, uh, it just looks like that. All right, um, I don't wanna use whole a whole half of an onion. That's gonna go a lot farther than you think. So what I'm doing here, instead of the uh, traditional dicing method, of like going across and then making parallel cuts. I'm actually doing helical cuts where I'm going around with the circle when I make my cut. So coming in at an angle. And from that, you should typically be able to um, circumvent. You should be able to like circumvent the uh, lateral cuts that you have to make and it actually gives you a cleaner dice. So, Come down, and look at that. So that is, I actually, I've known about this method for a long time, but it wasn't until a couple months ago that I really decided to like, put it into play. And I like this method of uh, onion dicing significantly more than the traditional method. We want some jalapeno. So we're gonna take top off, we're gonna split it down the middle. Same thing as earlier with the bell peppers. It's a pepper. So skin side down, come across. No, 
No. Uh, I'm gonna wash my hands. Thoroughly. Cilantro, I'm not even gonna like do a specific amount. I'm just gonna cut some. Yeah, I feel like that seems like a pretty reasonable amount, right? You know, stuff like this, you do the taste. You do what sounds good to you. Mix it all together. And we'll chop the cilantro just a little bit finer. And now, a lot of people with herbs, you know, especially like cilantro and parsley and stuff, they like to do this. I don't like that. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just not my method. I much prefer, you know, just make a pass, rotate, make another pass, rotate, until it's, you know, to your desired cut. Lime, mentioned before, whenever you're doing any sort of citrus juicing, especially by hand, roll it across the cutting board like this, put a lot of pressure on it. It's gonna loosen up those juices. It's gonna feel a lot softer when you squeeze it now. That's good. Just gonna cut this guy in half. It's going straight in there. And you know what? I like lime. I like the nice tang. Plus there's a good bit of this stuff here. I'm just gonna use the whole thing. Last thing. Salt. Got a lot of flavors going on here. I wanna brighten them up. Throw a pinch in here. I'm just gonna see how easily I can stir this in a damn deli court. Guys, do this in a bowl. Ain't much to it. Just do it and transfer it. I just wanted to save myself a dish. It's so squeaky. And give a little taste, see if we need some salt. That's good, fucking Pico. Hot damn. The extra lime really went the extra mile. That was, that's really nice. It's a really, really good Pico, guys. Now, when I decided to do this, I intentionally did not buy tortilla chips because I knew I would slam this whole thing and the whole bag in one sitting. Um, if you ever need to distract me, just put chips and salsa or chips and pico in front of me, and I'm done for. My God, that's one of my biggest weaknesses. All right, so I'm gonna make some rice. Um, I'm not gonna film it because it's rice. It's just, it takes some time. I'm using a rice cooker. There's no magic tricks to it other than wash your rice. Uh, I mentioned before, wash your damn rice, get those excess starches off of there, and uh, come back, I'll show you how we're gonna plate this up for the week. We'll be good to go. We'll be real good to go. All right, so uh, rice is done, and I've already got it pre-portioned out into uh, four um, containers. You'll probably use Tupperware. I am using um, very nice reusable carry-out containers that I slowly accumulated from my last job, um, and they're great. So uh, to start off with, you know, plating these up. I'm just gonna make a little better rice. Uh, how much rice, how much do you want? So I've got about a cup, cup and a half of cooked rice, I would say in each of these, not cup, cup and a half of um, uncooked rice. That's the word, uncooked. Um, I made three cups and I still have um, probably about a cup and a half left, uh, which is great because I'll eat that for dinner tonight. So all we're gonna do here this is portion it out. Now I'm doing four, I have eight thighs, and the uh, reason I'm doing that, obviously two thighs per meal. Also, chicken doesn't last super long, so I think four days is kind of the maximum amount of time that I really wanna give it before I start getting kind of concerned about it. Just gonna place a thigh. All right, I guess I should say two thighs in each one. And then we're just gonna, you know, evenly divide our veggies into our four containers. And just like that, you have dinner for four days, or lunch for four days, or lunch and dinner for two days. I don't give a shit what you do. Just eat it, it's good. Um, and it's really not that bad for you. It's just chicken, rice, and veggies. Now, 
one thing that I'm going to do with these, uh, I'm not going to show you here because I'm not eating any of them now, is I have some avocados. And uh, when I pull one out and heat it up, which this is great, you can just chuck it in the microwave, it should be good to go just for a couple minutes until it's hot. You know when it's hot. Um, just cut up some avocado, throw it on top, got a little bit more uh, healthy stuff on top. So yeah, that's just about how you do it. So go ahead and get these wrapped up and I'm going to let you guys go. So. Once again, as always, thank you for watching. Put those buttons down there, tell YouTube you like me. And uh, yeah, yeah. Follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, do what you want or don't. It's up to you. Do whatever makes you happy, man. Um, Patreon, guys, right there. Y'all are the best. Help me pay my bills. Otherwise, love y'all. See you soon.